What's up guys, I'm Lee Morris with fstoppers.com and today we're going to be doing a quick review of the brand new DJI X5R and the Osmo handheld gimbal. Ah! Just a few years ago, one of the only options for stabilizing a video camera was to use a mechanical counterbalance similar to a Steadicam or a Glidecam system. These systems could work well, but they took a lot of time to set up, a lot of counterbalancing, springs, vests, arms, and even if you got it perfectly dialed in, if you didn't know how to use it properly, you may not be able to get super smooth footage. A few years ago, the Mobi was introduced and it was a 15 or $20,000 digital electronic gimbal system, which would stabilize the camera using little motors instead of counterbalances. This was a huge innovation, but of course it was extremely expensive when it first came out. And just a couple of years ago, DJI introduced the Ronin, which was their version of the Mobi that you could buy for less than $2,000. We reviewed the Ronin and we absolutely loved it, but we were also the first to admit that it wasn't the most simple product to use. And being that it was so big, we decided not to purchase it for our own studio. As we know, cameras are getting smaller and more powerful every single month. We have cell phones that are taking incredible 4K footage. We have GoPros. We have the DJI Phantom, which has built-in cameras that can also shoot 4K. And the need for a full-size DSLR or a full-size video camera isn't necessary anymore. One tool that we use all the time now is a gimbal for the iPhone 6S. We can walk around with this little gimbal that only costs $200 and get incredible looking 4K footage if there's enough light outside. But if we go into any sort of dimly lit situation, we can't use the iPhone at all and the entire thing falls apart. I was getting really close to buying something like the Ronin so that I could use my DSLR and get really low light footage that was still stable, but then DJI introduced the Osmo system. Now I've personally used the X5 camera on the Inspire 1. That camera did not shoot raw, but I was able to get incredible footage at night with that drone and camera. So I was super excited to try this out with the raw version and actually shoot raw video for the first time in my career. Let me first tell you what I have in my hand here. Uh, you're gonna have to buy each of these three pieces completely separately. This is the Osmo handle and it costs about $300 and you're going to have to have the handle to hold on to, but also this is what gives you the control of the camera and holds the battery itself. On top of that, we have an X5 adapter that allows you to put the X5 onto the Osmo handle itself, that's $100. On the top here, we have the X5R camera, and what makes it the R version is actually this SSD component that we have here. If you buy just the X5 version of this camera, uh, it will look the exact same, but it won't have this huge piece coming off the back. As you can see, this is a little SSD drive, which actually records all of the raw footage because a standard micro SD card is not fast enough. All in this kit is about $4,000, which is extremely expensive, but what you're paying for is the ability to shoot this raw video. If you're not interested in the raw feature, you can get the standard X5 camera with the entire setup here for about $2,000. Now over here on my left, you're going to see a cell phone or smartphone holder here, and this holds almost any smartphone. It's uh, spring-loaded. And you're going to want to use this with a smartphone because not only is this the only way you're going to actually see through the camera, it's also the way that you're going to control the camera and choose the focus and choose the aperture and uh, you know set the color point, set the white balance, set the shutter speed, everything that you're going to actually need to do instead of using the buttons on the remote here, you're going to do on your smartphone. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on and I'll show you the first thing that was kind of a shock to me. There are fans in this little processing SSD package here. These fans are needed to cool off this entire mechanism that sends all of the data to the SSD drive. And uh, it's pretty loud if you can listen. And if you're in uh, the type of environment where you need it to be perfectly silent, this is probably not going to work. I have not seen the other setup myself, but I have been told that the other version, just the X5 version that cannot shoot raw does not have this entire piece, and therefore it does not have the fan, so it is a much more silent option. So now that you have a basic idea of how this thing works, let me take this out on location. I'm gonna show you some test footage, and I will compare it to the footage out of my iPhone 6S. As you can see, we went to a local marina, and I'm using my iPhone 6S to actually control the camera. I'm choosing the lowest ISO, ISO 100, around f5.6, and then choosing my shutter speed to get a correct exposure. 
As you can see, the 4K footage looks awesome on this camera, but to be perfectly honest, the footage out of my iPhone 6S looks awesome as well. So what I did here is you can see me walking side by side and I'm actually shooting with both at the exact same time. To stabilize the iPhone, I'm using the Smooth C stabilizer, which we bought off Amazon for I think around 200 bucks. You can watch that review here if you're interested. And of course, we don't have as many manual features with the iPhone, but as you can see, when we have plenty of light to work with, the iPhone's footage looks amazing as well. Now, when I got back on the computer and I really started to look at the details of both of these cameras footage, I noticed that the X5R did have significantly sharper looking imagery at 4K. The thing that you have to keep in mind though is that most videographers are not shooting 4K to actually export 4K footage, they're shooting 4K for better 1080p footage. When I take the 4K footage and sample it down to 1080, which is the majority of all of the footage that we actually produce, it's very difficult for me to see a significant difference. Now you may be saying, but Lee, the iPhone can't shoot raw video and the X5R can. What's your opinion there? And to be perfectly honest with you, this is the very first time I've ever shot raw with a video camera. I did not realize how cumbersome shooting raw actually would be. It's so huge. It takes so long to transfer the footage. You have to then encode the footage and then playing it back, you have to re-render it so the computer can actually watch it back smoothly. Then you have to edit then export it out and then edit the footage. It's such a slow process that I would never shoot raw video with the computers the way they are today for the projects that we are currently working on. Obviously, if I was shooting a 30 second commercial for TV or something and I needed it to be absolutely perfect, definitely I'm going to be shooting raw and you can get the footage to look much, much better. But for what we do, or if I was imagining what a wedding videographer does, there's no way I'm going to be shooting raw footage for eight hours during the day because it's just not efficient for that type of shooting. Now, I've been using the iPhone for professional videos for a while now, and I know how it can perform outside. Obviously, the X5R was better, but it wasn't that much better. I also know that the iPhone does not perform well in low light at all, so that's where this thing's really going to shine. We decided to go inside a home, turn off the lights, and walk around with both cameras. Now this is a micro four thirds camera that has detachable lenses. It comes with a lens with a 1.7 aperture, which is absolutely amazing for low light. So what I was able to do was open up my aperture to 1.7, slow my shutter speed to 1 30th of a second, raise up my ISO to ISO 800, and I was able to get this dark room to look pretty bright. If you compare that to my iPhone, I couldn't even get anywhere near a correct exposure with the iPhone. This is as bright as I could possibly get it. And of course, if you look in the dark areas, there's grain all over the place. I would consider this footage to be completely unusable. What we did next is we took out one of our Nikon D750 cameras that we film all of our videos on. We put a 1.8 aperture lens on that camera. Keep in mind that our cameras only shoot 1080 but we captured some video with that camera as well. And as you can see, the X5R absolutely destroys our D750. You can see that the footage looks blurry compared to the X5R. You can also see how much more grain there is in the footage as well when you compare it to the X5R. So as you can see, the footage from this camera, especially in low light, is absolutely amazing. And in terms of form factor and convenience to use, this is so much better than using a full-size Movi or Ronin system. Now, there is one major issue that I have with this product, and that is the battery life. When we were using this thing, we could just watch the battery life tick down as we were using it. Every few seconds, it's losing a percentage. I think this thing's battery life can last like 20 minutes, which I personally find to be completely unacceptable. Now, from what I've been told, it's the raw processor which is actually eating all of the battery life. And considering the fact that I never wanna shoot raw again because it was such a pain in the butt, I'm going to lean towards buying the X5 system. It's thousands of dollars cheaper, it's going to have at least double the battery life, and you're still going to have the same performance in low light. Obviously, it's not going to be as good as if you shot the exact same footage in RAW and try to tweak everything, but you're saving hours and hours of time and you're saving tons of gigabytes of space on your hard drive as well. So who is this camera system for? Well, it's for somebody who wants the simplicity and convenience of using a really small camera that can get incredibly high resolution imagery in bright light and in dim light. If you're a wedding videographer, 
you need to run out today and buy one of these things. I'm not totally sold on the raw version yet, especially for somebody who's going to be shooting hours and hours of footage. It's just not very realistic at this point in time. But if I was a wedding videographer and I didn't wanna carry around some Ronin system with a big DSLR and I could get footage that looks even better than a DSLR with something that I can hold in one hand, I can't really imagine anything better than this. The other thing that's so cool about the system, especially if you're getting into aerial photography, is that this camera can be used on the Osmo system or you can unsnap it and put it on the Inspire One drone. If you have a few thousand dollars to spend on a new drone, this system is so awesome. I feel like you're, you're kind of getting two products for the price of one because you can just snap the camera on and off and use them on both devices. If you're interested in solid looking footage in normal daylight conditions, you could go with an iPhone gimbal like what we've got. They also make gimbals for GoPros. Uh, you could buy the X3 Osmo, which is the Osmo handle with the X3 camera. It's a little bit cheaper. But if you want that ability to really shoot in low light and have a little bit more control over the camera itself, getting the X5 or the X5R is gonna be a no-brainer for you. Ah!